today's video we're taking a quick look at the JVC PCX200. Alright guys, so lately I've been doing a lot of kind of long, hour-long-ish videos. So I thought we'd take a break for a minute here from those long format videos and take a quick look at uh, this guy since I haven't really done like a boombox stereo AV monitory video for a while. I know these don't go over well, I know my bread and butter here is old PC stuff, but every once in a while we do like to take a look at other interesting vintage electronics like uh, this guy. Um, uh, this is the PCX200, uh, late 80s, uh, early 90s sort of boombox. I'm not sure if this was, I mean, it seems like it was a higher end uh, boombox, uh, but it might have been JVC's like uh, mid tier sort of uh, boombox, but then again, I'm not quite sure. I know there were some higher number models and some lower number models around the same time, but. Um, I quite like this guy. Uh, if you look on eBay, uh, this model seems to be fairly desirable. Uh, it seems to go for about $200 plus on eBay. Uh, that's fully working anyways. Uh, unfortunately, this particular example... Oh, there he comes up. Got to see what's going on. This particular example is not fully working, and we will take a look at that in a moment. All right, so let's take a look at this guy. When I spotted this at Goodwill, I, I had to pick it up, uh, and I plugged it in and it powered on. Um, I didn't wasn't able to like fully test it at the time, but e either way, the price was right. I, I had to pick this up. I'm a sucker for these huge kind of boom boxes. I like this one because it seems to strike a good middle ground between like 80s and 90s aesthetics. It, you can see the design's kind of rounded. It does have a CD player on it. Um, so it does kind of have that more 90s uh, modern look with the, the rounded edges and stuff, but it still has enough of that big, like, oversized boxiness of the 80s that, I don't know, I, I like the design of this. It just strikes a good balance uh, between 80s and 90s aesthetics, in my opinion. Um, it doesn't have all the little bells and whistles and lights, but it has more than most I come across. you got two little uh, displays here. Um, you've got, let's see, we'll, let's, we'll go over this thing in general, but um, I think the thing that this model introduced, this might have been on earlier models, but it does have the cool 3D hyper bass sound. Uh, so, interesting stuff there. Two big speakers here, so let's just take a quick look at this uh, boom box here. Let me zoom in real quick. Uh, so we've got these two little displays here. Uh, this one is would be for your CD when you have it in CD mode. It would give you the track and everything. The CD on this model is unfortunately completely dead. This won't even light up. Um, and then this right here would be like the radio uh, display. And then under, you know, you have your uh, settings for stations, uh, preset stations, one through one, two, three, four, five uh, presets. And then you have your tuning right there uh, for the radio. And see that little light there? It's currently powered on. I'm just going to go over this really briefly. I don't want this to be a long video. Uh, so here's uh, some CD controls, search, intro, random, stop, clear, play, pause, search. Uh, what was there a search? No. Oh yeah, two search. We have forward and back search, repeat, and memory call. All right, and then we have our tape deck right here. Okay, I've heard uh, I've heard from other YouTubers that the slower it opens when you hit stop eject, the better the mechanism is. It that's not too fast. It doesn't like shoot out, but it's not super smooth either. Mid grade ish. <laughs> so here you can switch um, reverse modes and then forward and reverse. You can set right here. Standard. Let's see, what's this? Uh, beat out. Um, record, play, fast forward, or rewind, fast forward, stop, eject, and pause. Um, now, my machine's weird. The tape deck also is not completely working. It will play, but 
fast forward and reverse just don't work at all. So I, I don't know if it's a belt or anything. I'm not really skilled enough to get inside this thing and fix it, unfortunately. So uh, basically the only thing that works on this is it plays, the tape deck plays, but again, you can't forward reverse, and the radio works fine. CD player, completely dead. Uh, so, and then right here we have the, uh, there's the power button, and then we have this five uh, band graphic equalizer, and then here's the button for the hyper bass sound right there. The cool thing that I love about this is when you hit this, right down here that lights up so i'm gonna it's off right now so let me engage the hyper bass sound and boom i just uh, i think that's really cool I, <laughs> I like i like uh like boom boxes with a lot of like bling and lights and stuff like that so uh yeah that's an extra bonus so let's take a look at the top and back really quick can't forget down here we also have a uh, little audio jack right there for headphones so looking up to the top right here we have a Dolby system we have here's the volume knob feels feels really nice I usually like uh, JVC stuff it seems to, to work really well um, but again I, I was really bummed that the, even the, the CD drive doesn't work at all in this um, again this is an early CD drive that this was this system particularly was built in 89 um, so, uh, there was the, I believe the, uh, PCX100, the model before this one used, uh, a little bit older, pr more primitive CD drive, so they upgraded the CD, uh, the mechanism in this machine, but it's just not working here. Uh, Dolby noise reduction, on and off, um, so there's no setting it on this machine, there's no, like, S or A or B or anything, it's just on or off. Um, normal, let's see. Uh, here's the to set the type of tape you're using. I uh, believe it also sets the FM mode. And then here we, you use this to go from tape tuner and CD. So right now it's on CD, but nothing happens. Um, I put CDs in there. This this should light up right here, but nothing happens. It's completely dead. Uh, we've got a handle. Got a nice little antenna right there. And then, not much going on in the back. I won't even do a full, because there's just not much going on here. Um, got right here, where the uh, speakers on the side connect. You've got your right and left out uh, right there. Uh, hold on, it's up there. A little tricky with one hand. you got your battery compartment to take a ton of giant uh, D batteries. And then, uh, that's about it. Uh, power cord does disconnect. <laughs> so, um, yep. Alright, so now I'm just going to turn it on and we'll uh, take a look at it working. At least as much of it that does work. Alright, so we're just going to test this guy real quick. Um, obviously, because of like copyrights and stuff like that, I'm not going to be able to linger on any radio station for too long. Now, this thing doesn't get too loud, uh, even at max volume setting. Uh, obviously it's enough, it's, it's very doable, uh, but if you're looking for something to, you know, shake the windows of your house, uh, this might not be the boombox for you. Uh, although the, I find the volume uh, level quite sufficient for my needs. So I'm going to put it in tuner mode. Um, there we go. And if you notice right here, this lights up FM 87.5. Again, in CD mode, this top one should light up and it tell you the tracks and stuff, but believe me, even with a CD inserted and hitting all, nothing happens. Uh, it doesn't even spin up the uh, disc in there. So, let's uh, go through. You can change the station with this button here. I'm not getting anything. And you would hold it in to, for it to auto-search, so here we go with some classic. That's max volume. I'm going to engage hyper bass here. I don't hear much of a difference, but maybe you will. A little bit. Me 
Again, can't linger on anything too long. Think about pain, it's insanely short. I think I can do... Yeah, I... I, I gave it sweatpants last week, you were... Alright, so let's go to tape mode. So, one more click over. Uh, now we're in tape mode. This still stays on, though, uh, for whatever your last uh, station was. So let's play the tape here. I don't even know what I... This was in there when I got it at Goodwill. The GSA Mile High Concert. Uh, St. John's Cathedral, 1996. Um, so, all right. Well, I thought it was what it used to be working. It can still, I can hear it. Let me see. Well, that doesn't sound good. So maybe my tape player is not working anymore. Give me a moment here to fiddle with it. All right, so the tape player is actually still working. I'll turn it up a little. You can hear flutter. Um, so I don't know, it could be the tape, it could be the the boombox. I'm not sure. I'm not really an audiophile or a boombox expert, so I couldn't tell you. But this is max volume, so it is playing the tape. But again, there's that little bit of flutter. Let me, let me put something else in there for a minute, although I don't think I have anything copyright friendly, so hold on. Okay, so I did play a little bit of this tape. This is my uh, Nine Inch Nails uh, broken cassette. I actually got this cassette uh, this has been with me since high school so mid to late uh, 1990s I've had this cassette and uh, it played I didn't hear that fluttering so I think it's the tape although it didn't sound spectacular um, on this uh, boom box it did play okay but yeah if you look at like <laughs> oh wait okay apparently now the fast forward and well that shouldn't happen <laughs> so yeah, it, it tries to go for a sec. I don't think it... I'm trying to look in the... Yeah, nothing's moving. It just... It holds itself down for a moment, and then it flicks up, and it doesn't actually uh, turn. So it's not fast-forwarding or reversing. It's only playing. Yeah. All right, so that's about it for this machine. Uh, I can't really give my full review because, again... Uh, half of it is pretty much non-functional. Uh, I don't think I'm going to keep it. As cool as it is, as much as I love the aesthetics of this thing right now, um, I don't know. I mean, I have that other JVC. Uh, I, I might have to pull it out and compare. I, I do love the aesthetics and the features of this one way better. But, I mean, half of it's not working. And I believe it's it's... Pretty, pretty sure it's beyond my capabilities of repairing, at least repairing easily. So I'll probably throw this on like offer up or something for a little bit of cash. Um, but I, while it was in my possession, I did want to do uh, a quick video on it since I, I haven't done a video, like a shorter video like this in a while. Uh, I don't know. It is really tempting to keep even if just as like a radio. But eh, I mean, how often do I actually listen to a radio these days? How much do any of us listen to a radio these days, I guess, when we're not in the car, so... I don't know. I don't know. It's pretty cool, but I, I might just uh, let it go. But uh, thank you guys for watching. If, if you do have any suggestions or comments about this particular boombox, uh, let me know in the comments. Always love the comments. Uh, if it's like some kind of easy fix, like, oh, you just pull off the back and you like replace a fuse or something, let me know. I, I, I'd give it a try. But I don't know, if it's something complicated, I don't know if I really want to dedicate the time and effort for like some kind of full repair that probably is outside of my abilities anyways. I'm just a humble dude on YouTube sharing his hobby with you guys. Just want to stress that. So, I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Give me a like if you did, or dislike if you want. I don't care, really. Uh, but <laughs> I'll uh, see you in the next video, and thank you for watching.